this particular piece that I'm doing is very much like that idea that at the end of, of a year or the end of a decade, everyone goes on about what fantastically has just happened and listing it and numbering and naming it. And then, and then a month later, at the beginning of the year, they all announce what's about to happen. And of course, I found myself in the paradox of, by the very nature of creating my own, which I have done with you being part of it, as ones to watch, is that I, I'm, I'm anxious that I've done that thing that, that creates a kind of over-attention to something, you know. But on the other hand, I think it's part, it's part of what it was. It's what we used to do anyway, but it didn't immediately go into the sun or something, yeah. or the times. <laughs> I hope um, I'm given the, some oxygen, you know, to, to breathe, I mean, mm. and uh, I don't expect things to sort of catapult into an uncontrollable state immediately. I hope they don't, actually, because I want, I prefer things that just are a bit more organic and, you know, a slow burn, really. And mm. um, I'd find it quite horrible, in fact. I mean, if you look at what sort of happened with the Arctic monkeys and how they were mm. sort of rammed down your throat. Exactly. And Lady yes. Gaga as well. Mm. Um, you don't have a choice, actually, whether you like them That's or right. not. You, mm. That element of spending time and getting to know them has, has gone because it's mm. just rammed down your throat. Mm. So I'll stay in, in Manchester and I should uh, be largely ignored because no one ever comes up to Manchester. So. Still. Yes, <laughs> it's a slight dig, but at the whole of London there. But uh, As much as we're saying, you know, oh, it doesn't want to be like the Arctic Monkeys, you must hope that there's a certain amount of people that buy it and love it and it, and it becomes something and that you take on a position as something. You know, you don't want to do it and just it be nothing. The part of it no, is going out and I becoming. I don't want it to be nothing. Yeah. Um, it's kind of why I'm doing it in the first place, is to avoid, you know, nothingness, yeah. really. Uh, I think if someone buys it, takes it home, and spends time with it, and then it becomes part of their life, then that's amazing. That's what I want for it, really. Mm. And, and what about for you as a as a writer, as, a, as someone who thinks a lot about things? To, to be honest, it's, I think it really helps staying in Manchester, being quite private with the process, really, of writing songs um, and being away from all the kind of colour and noise of, of London, really. Mm. Be quite hermit-like about it. it, prevents me from thinking too much about what happens when it mm. enters the out, outer world. And mm. I think I've, if I thought about that too much, yeah. And it would sort of sully mm. the writing and, you know, yeah. you, you start, I imagine, thinking, oh, an audience of however many people are going to yes. hear this next song. Yeah. Um, I'm not really at that point. Yeah. Your loyalty, in, in a way, is to something else as to what pop is now, which is just almost disappears in the air and just yes. immediately becomes available, which, of course, see, uh, uh, suggests then it's more of a commodity than a than a work of art or a piece of, you know, private yeah. a, a property, if you like. That, that yeah, I, I think the art of, you know, buying records has definitely been corroded by the download market. And mm. again, I'm not against, you know, technology and advancement, etc. cetera, but, um, you know, I, it's not very exciting, is it, you know, to download a mm. one song without the extraneous packaging that comes with it. I don't. I hope that I won't disappear. I know certainly lots of people who still love inlay sleeves and so on. It, it, it's kind of interesting how much you've made of it being your first album, the idea of the <laughs> first album, sort of, you know, uh, uh, almost uh, uh, to the extent that something you wrote was that you imagined that when you began there would be some kind of ceremony almost. Yeah. And in fact, it just began very unceremoniously. Yes. Um, you kind of expect there to be you know, explosions of glitter and celebration and everyone to be going, wow, at everything you do, but no one does that at all. And instead, the process is just, uh, you know, I, I went, I discovered new levels of tiredness, you know, mm -hmm. doing this. And, uh, <laughs> um, well, to me, first albums are like, you know, artifacts that are very special indeed. Mm. And uh, I'm not really helping myself by having the weight of that behind me but to be honest when you close the door and you're in that sort of inner sanctum mm. you know you do just focus and get on with your own music and what do you find yourself concentrating on I, I am obsessed with sound and already I'm unpicking the first album and thinking about the second one and the third album and mm. um, you know there's just me and Guy who I recorded it with 
in there. There was just the two of us in there for 21 days, mm. um, except for when Andrew came in to do his drums. Um, so there was no time to reflect on anything because the burden of all the, the instruments and everything, I, I did everything else. So there's no time for me to sit around while someone else laid their part down. Mm. So it was a real sort of masterclass in, uh, you know, fast thinking and the mm. clock was ticking by and I'm having to think about what the next thing is to get done before I've finished what I'm doing now. So mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, my mind was being sharpened throughout mm. that process. So mm. to sort of answer, yeah, it's, it's, I wasn't, I was kind of focused on everything that had to be done and there yeah. was no room for, I suppose, you know, uncertainty, which is a good thing mm -hmm. in a way. I sometimes sense a kind of melancholy coming from you that you, you're not in the right time, that the time you would have liked to have been in you know, was, was previous and that, therefore as much as you try and build into what you do a sense of its newness and its radicalism, you can't help but think that people were doing this kind of area 25, 30 years ago. Well definitely, um, I, I do feel dislocated from what I sense is expected of me as a you know, pop person. Mm -hmm. I feel dislocated from that really and the things I see on telly don't really, I don't really feel part of that, although I guess I am now starting to become perhaps part of the machine that I, I kind of hate, really. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's, I don't know, I, I hope it doesn't seem contrived, though. It's just that you know, I dig around and listen to music. Mm. You kind of go, oh, turn it over, and when's that from? Oh, yeah. look, it's 1980. Oh, look, it's 1979. Oh, and that just keeps happening with me. I'm just interested, you know, the, the worry that you might have felt that it would sound, because the sound is so important, that, that it would sound nostalgic rather than sound, you know, of now and of you, of this moment, you know, rather than it feeling like you were, you know, yearning to sound like something from 1983 or something. The, th the thing is, I don't think it's either or, you know, I think that um, it is, it is of, of me because, you know, every fragment, every single layer in mean, every song is somewhat of, you know, thought about and put there and sort of sculpted and, and yeah, it's definitely got echoes, but I think a song can be still be original whilst having echoes of songs that have gone before. And for me, I think that enriches yeah. a song. I do want to look to the future and I don't think that the album is a nostalgia trip at all. Now you join, let's face it, a glut of music, a glut of people, yep. not only you know, looking back to those kind of sounds that you're interested in, but just all sound in a way, and all pop music is now just yeah. everywhere, all at the same time, and distinctions have sort of gone missing, and standards have gone bizarre. Once upon a time, the kind of music you're interested in, it was very definitely and defiantly on the edge of something, yeah. and, and in the margins. Whereas now, as soon as you make a noise, even like you might make, as you yes. say, you immediately become part of a machine, part of today's pop, you know, bonanza. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm part of a bonanza, really. I'm not a very bonanza <laughs> kind of person. Um, <laughs> a lot of what I perceive in the, the machine today seems quite mannered um, and it recreates things instead of creating something and seems to have lost some magic for that, I think. Mm. Um, at the time, maybe 30 years ago, I imagine things were a lot more, as you say, on the edge of things and disparate and there's just, just a lot of uh, seeming sophistication today that leaves mm. me feeling a bit empty, actually. Mm. That idea of this Manchester history, you know, that started, you know, with you know what and you know who and that big thing and that went on and then it <laughs> went to the next stage and the next stage. I know. And then you kind of look at it and, and wonder at what point for people within Manchester, musicians within Manchester, it became its own sort of heritage burden, if you like. You know, a bit like Liverpool when, when the, the Beatles almost blocked out the light. And then I wondered if, you know, <laughs> growing up into that and wanted to be a musician, there's a sense of, well, we've got all that history and it ceases to be an advantage and a, an inspiration and becomes a kind of blockage in a way. For me, I'm still at the point where it's it's actually really inspiring still for me. I, I, it doesn't matter how many times I sort of reread the same histories, I still somehow sometimes can't believe all those mm. individuals came from the same place. But yeah, it does have a weight of history and even I get sick of yeah. factory sometimes. But then again, but then some new detail is uncovered, yeah, some yeah, new yeah. piece of uh, evidence or yes. artifact is uncovered that makes it go, oh my God, yeah, it was really unique, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's the bits behind the the heritage bit that are the more interesting, you know, that 
are still to, I mean, the fact that there can still be so much to be uncovered, I think is A, is why there is this continuing fascination, which leads to, you know, a kind of sickness. But on the other hand, it is interesting that buried in it were, were, were ideas that, that, that still have a value and a worth of carrying on, you know, because to some extent, you know, when it's being self-conscious about the chain, it seems to have broken a little bit around Oasis because it did start to feed back I rather than I must admit that's when my sort of interest started to wane a bit in the Kevin Cummins book because, you know, it just taps into a whole mm. sort of blokish culture that yes. uh, I think is a bit is quite one-dimensional, yeah. really. Because oddly enough, although there weren't many girls directly involved in the early days of Manchester, it didn't have that blokish element. It's, it's one of the things I particularly... It's more uh, intellectual, it seemed. Uh, what they used to call, you know, pretentious and all that, but I think it was a craving for for knowledge and a craving of the idea of using knowledge to break out of a situation, you know, it seemed to be the, 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 the essence of it, you know, rather than, than picking up a guitar and picking up girls, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to sort of see that anywhere nowadays, really, in the sort of music machine. Yeah. I don't know if it's evaporated completely, really, just that risk taking, really, and the mm. slight preposterousness sometimes. Yes. Because you, you're talking your notes, there's that bit where you talk about the way you were recording the sound, you were trying to avoid that rock thing, you know, the emotions and the expression that, that, oh, yeah. that makes yeah. it sound, you know, even though you're using the same instruments, there's one way you could do it that makes it sound blokish and, and, yeah, and stale. Yeah, I mean, I, to sort of use, use your own words, I wanted to cordon off the rock yeah. element um, yeah. very much so, because mm. it does, that history is, is very, um, I think it's quite one-dimensional, and it doesn't want people who, you know, don't look like them to be involved in it, I mm. don't think. I mm. don't think it's generous in that way. And with the, with the drums, yeah, they were recorded in a sort of methodical way, in a, in a way to sort of isolate Andrew and, and dehumanise him to mm. an extent, mm. to kind of um, minimise this idea of too much expression. But ultimately, it is a very selfish act, isn't yeah, it? You know, yeah. writing songs, making albums, asking people to uh, dip into your world. Yeah. They either will or they won't.